Hello, this is 02AJE96, and today I'm going to teach you the basics of redstone. I know it's quite a broad topic, so please bear with me. It might take a while, this tutorial, but, um, yeah, I'm sure I'll be fine. Anyway, first is probably one of the first things you're likely to encounter in redstone, is the simple piston pull demonstration kind of thing, where you have two pistons, bottom one goes up, top one goes up, top one goes down, and then the bottom one goes down. Now the reason why this is probably the first thing you're likely to encounter with redstone is probably the first thing you're going to try and do is have a piston, push a piston, then attract. Basically, how to get it to work, which is probably a lot more complicated than what we first seem, basically what you need to do is you need to have the bottom piston activate first and deactivate last. That one to activate second and deactivate first. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have a 1 repeater going into the first piston, making it go up first, a 2 repeater going into the second repeater, um, uh, second piston, making it go up second. Then you're going to have the uh, repeater on the top setting, on the bottom one, so then it loses its power last. And that's basically how it works. Also, after that, if you have a block on top of it, which you want to try and pull down, what you're going to want to try and do is you're going to want to try and have a repeater branching out here and then into this kind of mechanism, which will basically mean as soon as it turns off, it'll send a small pulse by here, which will activate that. And that's basically how that kind of contraption works. Cool. Simple. Simple-ish. Simple pull demonstration. Cool. Now the next one is the timer. Timer tick tock goes to clock as we all say. Basically what happens here is you have a redstone torch by there, so then as soon as that blocks by there it powers this, which then goes into here, which is an inverted or inverter, and then that goes into the piston, making it push. So basically all oh, pull and hand pull basically, because it's already pushed out, that's why the block's there. And that's a sticky piston, which is very important, otherwise this contraption won't work with a normal piston. And also here's just a little demonstration showing you, oh look it's on, it's off, it's on, it's off, there we go. Cool, now on to the next one. This is the switch thingy, otherwise called as a memory gate. And basically what happens is when you activate one side, it stays activated. When you activate the other side, it stays activated. Kind of good for um, lockdown systems and other random stuff like cooldown systems. Yep, useful for that, do a tutorial on that sometime. Yep. But yes, this can be very useful when doing some fun stuff. Activate, stays on. Activate, stays on. Cool. I think you get the gist of that. Oh, do you want me to tell you how it works? Basically, that piston, um, when this is off, that piston's on. Activating this, making this on, and that one's off. It seems to activate that one. That one turns on. Making that one off. Making this off. Making that on. Making this powered. See? Did you get what I just said then? Did you get what I just said then? Cool. It's probably fine then. And the next ones. This is an AND gate. Basically, only when both of these are on will that piston be activated. Boom. Only when both of them are on. If only one of them's off. Uh, if only one of them's on, it won't work. Basically, what happens here is you activate the beats into here, which then go into two different um, inverters which stay on unless they're powered, then they both go into this one loop by here, which will then activate this inverter, so then that torch will only activate when both of them are off, and they'll both only be off when both of these are on. It's basically the concept behind AND gates. You can do them many different ways, it's just a demonstration version. You can have one on top of the other, like a line going across on top, and a line going in kind of thing. There's quite a few ways to do it. Anyway, so the next one is an AND gate mixed with a normal thing that uh, that turns off if both on. I basically just read that from the sign, but yeah. Um, basically what happens is if you have that on, the first one goes up. So basically if there's two on, the first one goes up. See, if only one of them's on, it's always the first one. If both of them are on, the first one goes down and the second one goes up. Pretty good, eh? This is like half of an adder. Speaking of adders, here's the next thing, and full adder. Basically this is using calculators and can be really cool looking. Also makes things look complicated when it's pretty cool. Um, it's pretty good. Basically, when you activate one, it's kind of similar to that one. One beat activates that one. Two beats activates that one. And three beats activates them both, which is kind of normal. But the thing with this one is it's also got a carry on by here. Carry on by here 
which is extremely important as with this carry on by here it will allow you to um, add these together because what you do is you take the two value over here and you plug that into the one value of another one and then if all those values are counted as two you can then take off the one value of there, count that as two, the one value of the first one, count that as one and the second value of the second one and count that as four if you get what I mean but anyway, that's a full adder now how it works, ah, that's what I was going to go into, how it works basically that powers this, so it's got a little AND gate in there where that powers that block and that one powers that block so then only when both of these blocks are unpowered will that one be unpowered meaning both of these will then get turned um, on and then when both of them are on it turns those on so basically it deactivates this by here but it also then it activates that by there so that's basically how the two section works and how when you have both on it gets rid of a one cool and basically how one works is rather simple is where that enters there, turns that off, turns this off, turns that on, goes down there, enters this block, which then turns that on, which then turns that off. Let me know. The back's on, so that turns this off, turning that on, and then they'll send a one over here. So that counts as one, that counts as two. See? It's quite cool. And then the carry on, which is the clever bit, basically what happens is it turns this on, and that one will turn that one off, um, which means this is no longer powered which will activate that, which will turn um, that off yeah, it'll turn that off no, wait. let me do this again that one turns on, then activating this which will then turn that one off going up into, uh, that one's off, so then this will be off making that on of course, um, if this isn't being powered already then it'll turn that off um, because if it's got more, if it's none here, that means it, it assumes it's a two, and if it's a two, then that's going to be on, which means this is going to be powered, which means that if that's off, then nothing will happen by here, and this will turn off and I'll turn on. So if there's nothing else on, um, then I'll just activate a one, or if there's a two on, it'll activate a one. So if it's nothing or a two, activates a one. Basically, if there's a one, it doesn't activate a one, but if there isn't a one activates the one and um, if there is a one already well what you'll find will happen is that will be off as well because that one activates that which turns off that so that one will be off as well making so if they're both on that one and that one will both be off meaning this will be off meaning that'll be on thus both um, turning that one off and also activating this which will go to the second one do you see what happens so basically, let me do a demonstration, that one's on, so that one goes across here, turns that on, turns that one on, goes across here, turns that one off, that one's off, that's on, boom, one. And basically how the add-on works, um, the carry-on works, if you only turn that one on, if there's already one on, then that'll turn off, these are both off, meaning that's off, meaning that's on, powering this block by here which unpowers that torch, meaning there's no one going on but because both of these are unpowered that torch is on and that powers this by here which means the two is on then when you do a three what you'll find will happen is when there's a two already on and then that one comes in that one will then turn um, off but since that's on because there's a two and not a one normally happening then what you'll find is that's still being powered which means that's um, off and that's off meaning that's off meaning that's on and meaning that the one is powered do you see how it works? I hope you do. Cool. Now the next one. Doodly -doo. This is the last one I'm going to go on so then you can understand just about enough to make a calculator with. So, binary to decimal decoder. This is the thing that makes it look like pretty, basically. It means you don't have to read it in binary or, um, yeah, basically read it in binary. It means you don't have to read it in binary. It's also, in, it's also necessary to do a um, decimal to binary decoder, which works kind of similar. But yeah, anyway. So you have your binary inputs, 1, 0, 0, 1 kind of thing. So these are the three different ones or zeros. They can either be off or on. And basically these represent the seven numbers that they can represent. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Those are the seven numbers you make with these three on or off switches. Basically, all you'll find is when you do the full adders, these adders work in binary. 
So this one will count as a 2, that one will count as a 1, and basically this will be the first digit, so that'll be, um, when this is on, it'll be 1, when that's on, it'll be 0, 1, when they're both on, it'll be 1, 1, it's kind of binary. So basically this converts it into something readable, like um, if you have a 7 segment display, you can plug this in, and it'll basically make it come up with the numbers, numbers, you know, the ones we all know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, that kind of thing. But anyway, with three different beeps, it can go up to seven. So what I've done here is I've linked this, and then when they're not on, it'll represent the number. So one, boom. The first one goes down, because I've got that representing as one. And um, both of them together would equal three, so the third one's gone down. Take away that, that will equal a two. So second one, boom. Here you get the gist, seven, all the way at the end. Take away that, five. So yeah. Basically, these are just testing all the different combinations you can have of these three different um, on or off values, and then putting all the different combinations, then when that certain combination is hit, it powers, and then activates a piston, retracting or like, pushing out. Anyway, so basically how it works is you have this value going here, which activates this block, meaning that's off, meaning that is no longer powered, meaning that's on, meaning that is um, on. Basically, what you do to make one of these is you have um, you have like a gap every one on the first on the first input. You have a gap every two on the second one. So we have one torch. Then we have two gaps, two torches, two gaps, two torches. And then on the um, third one, you have four torches, four gaps, four torches, four gaps, kind of thing. However, having one less torch for the first one because the first one you're gonna have um, well, if you want to start at one. It would normally be 4, normally be 2 to start off with, and this would normally be off to start off with because the first one would normally be 0. But since I haven't done a 0 value, uh, basically uh, you just start at like 1 less. Anyway, so anyway, how it works, uh, I've showed you how to make it, now how it works is that turns off that, meaning that's um, on, basically means that's on, that powers that. Cool. That's basically it. Pretty good, hey? But yeah, anyway, but if they're both on, still do the same thing. So let me take this out. Boom. Boom. It'll always be powered. Why? Because that one's off. This one's off. Oh my god. It's off. So then, what you want is this one will only be powered when this one's on, meaning that's turned off. Or rather, this will only be depowered when that one's um, on, turning this one off. And then these two are on, turning these two off. Since only one of these is off, then that one's off, that one's still on, meaning that one's still on, and this one's off, meaning that one's still on, meaning this is still powered. However, if that one's off, then that will be off, meaning that's no longer get powered by that, so then the only thing powering this now is that, so if I turn that on, oh look, there will happen to be the one one, then what will happen is you'll find it'll turn off, because they're all turned off only when these two are off, and that one's on, meaning that this one retracts only when the first one's on. And then the second one goes on similar principles by having it um, inverted sometimes and non-inverted at other times. So basically what you'll find is you'll find that one's inverted, that one's inverted, non-inverted, that one's inverted, that one's inverted, non-inverted, non-inverted. So basically what you're doing is kind of doing the non-inverted to inverted thing the same way as you do by here. So you know what 1, 2 and 3 is. So let's say 2 would be, um, a, 3 would be a 1 and a 2. So since this is the... Um, 3, 1, by here, you'll see that 1, 2, they're both not inverted, and then that one's inverted, so then it makes sure that one has to be off. Do you see what I mean? I hope you do. Anyway, I might go into more detail about that, I probably will when I do my calculator tutorial, which will probably come out sooner or later, <laughs> probably later, knowing me, because I'm terrible at doing these videos on a weekly basis, I think it's been months since my last one, but I've tried to help you get your head around redstone, hope it helps. Hope this tutorial helps you understand redstone a little bit more, and it all derived from a simple push-pull demonstration. Cool. See you whenever.